Today's episode of Just the Tip Tuesday is brought to you by CK Worldwide, the standard in TIG welding. CK is constantly innovating new solutions to help you tackle your toughest welding challenges. One of the most common problems I tackle while TIG welding is limited access. Sure, flexible torches are nice and all, but they're also limited when it comes to flexibility. That's why CK developed the FlexLock torch. My personal favorite and the one that I use the most is the FlexLock 230 water-cooled torch. The FlexLock torches have a full 360 degree rotation, allowing you to achieve the perfect work angle when you have limited access and limited space to work with. The FlexLock 230 has a full 100% duty cycle and features an ergonomic module design. Get your CK Worldwide FlexLock today along with other genuine CK Worldwide parts and accessories through your local CK authorized dealer. If you're not sure where your closest distributor is, head on over to ckworldwide.com and click on the Find a Dealer tab. It's that easy. CK Worldwide, the standard in TIG welding. Now let's get into the episode. episode of Just the Tip Tuesday. I ran across a very common question the other day on Facebook and also had a couple instructors reach out to me about the same topic. I've also run into the same issue several times during my time in the field and numerous times while teaching people how to weld, and that issue is arc blow or electromagnetic blowback, but we'll just stick with arc blow. Now, if you've ever ran the shield and metal arc welding process, you've no doubt had this happen to you, and you know as well as I do, it sucks. Arc blow is... Essentially, it's an, a deviation of an arc from its intended path. So we know when we strike the arc, we know which direction we want the arc to go, but sometimes it doesn't always go that way. It's usually the shortest distance between the welding electrode and your workpiece. When it happens, the arc can deflect in many different directions. The arc ends up either moving forward or backward or one side or the other while we're welding. You know, and honestly, it just kind of picks a path and it runs with it, and it's not the path that we want it to be at. You'll be welding along just fine, and then all of a sudden the metal just seems to not want to stick to the metal, and you know, you're know you fooling around with the rod, trying to work it back different angles. Uh, it starts to cut really deep into the base metal, and it's kind of like when you try to push two north-facing magnets together, and they push each other away. It seems like that's the same thing that happens with the base material and the molten metal from the electrode. Arc blow is it's caused by an unbalanced magnetic field around the welding arc, and the direction of arc blow can vary, and you really can't predict where or when it's going to happen. But in my experience, it tends to happen about three quarters of the way up a plate. And obviously this can happen when you're welding pipe as well. So it's not just limited to plate. Arc blow is kind of a phenomenon and I really don't understand all I know about it either. I do know that within our welding leads, while we're welding, it generates magnetic lines of flux. Not the flux like is on the outside of the welding rod. This is more of an electrical term. You've probably seen this when you run your leads out across the shop floor and there's grinding dust all over the place, you start welding, and then at the end of the day, you roll up your leads, and you can see exactly where your welding leads were. And that's because, you know, as you're welding, your leads kind of become magnetized, and then you've got grinding dust lines, you know, exactly where your leads were laid out. The problem is when these magnetic lines of flux go unstable and start pushing each other out of the way, then your weld starts going all haywire and sideways on you, and it's, it's just not a pretty sight. Well, while I don't completely understand what causes the problem, I do know several ways of counteracting it so it doesn't screw up your root weld. Usually once you get that root in, arc blow tends to disappear and it's no longer a problem. The first thing we can do is to switch our machine to AC or alternating current. Yes, you can stick weld with AC. Although it's not very common in the U.S., it can definitely be done. I've heard folks over in uh, Europe, they're welding AC 7018 downhill for open root applications. Yeah, I guess it just hasn't made its way across the pond over here. So switching to AC is going to help because it doesn't really have a polarity. It's switching back and forth between positive to negative 60 times a second. So arc blow is no longer an issue. Now there's a few things that you have to consider when you switch over to AC. The first thing is, can your electrode run on AC? Now the most common rod that's out there is 7018. That's God's rod, right? 7018 can be run on AC. But you're going to have to bump up your amperage a little bit because now you're splitting between fill characteristics and penetration characteristics. So crank up those amps by about 10 to 20 amps or so, depending on the diameter of your electrode. 
Another thing you're going to want to consider if you're going to switch over to AC is are you welding to a specific code or a WPS? You want to make sure you're allowed to switch to AC. In the AWS D1.1 structural code book, polarity is considered an essential variable. So that means we can't switch it. So if it says on the WPS DC positive, that's what you have to run. Otherwise, you got to get the entire procedure requalified. But if you're not welding to a code, you should be fine. Once you get that root in, you can just switch back over to DC reverse polarity and finish it out just like you're used to doing. The next thing we can do is try wrapping the welding lead, the, you know, the lead that's going to the workpiece. We can wrap that around the object that we're welding. Obviously, not within close proximity to where you can be doing the welding because we don't want to melt our leads. If you're a student, you can take that ground lead or workpiece lead and you can wrap it around the fixture arm. If you're out in the field, you got a column, you got a piece of pipe, you can, you know, take that uh, lead that's attached to your ground clamp and wrap it around that piece, I don't know, three or four times. That seems to do the trick. Don't ask me why it works. It just does. One engineer kind of explained these theories to me and how they're able to work. And it's because of something called PFM, pure freaking magic. So that's, that's really, that's the best way to put it. The next thing we can do is try to reposition our workpiece clamp. So if I'm going to be running an electrode that's eighth inch in diameter or less, I want to weld away from that workpiece clamp. So let's say I'm doing some vertical. I'm going to go ahead and put that workpiece clamp on the bottom, and then I'm going to weld vertical up. If I'm welding left to right, I'm going to go ahead and put the clamp on the left, so on and so forth. Now, if you're welding with an electrode that's 530 seconds or larger, you're going to want to weld towards the ground clamp. So if I'm welding in vertical, I'm going to go ahead and take that workpiece clamp and I'm going to put it at the top of the plate. If I'm welding left to right, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the right side. I want to weld towards that workpiece clamp. I don't know why it works. It just does. Once again, PFM. The last method is my favorite and it's my go-to anytime that I have to make a weld where I think I might experience any arc blow. And that's a jumper clamp. And this is something that my buddy Ryan Eubank showed me many, many years ago. And it works every time without fail. You simply take a 12 to 18 inch piece of welding cable or longer if need be and put a workpiece clamp on either end. So now you just have two workpiece clamps on either side of a cable. Now you're going to put your regular workpiece clamp on the material and then take one end of that jumper clamp and put it on the top side of one plate and hook the other clamp to the bottom side of the opposite plate. This trick will work 100% of the time, every time. We have several of these at the school and the students use them anytime they think they're gonna experience arc blow and it just works great. Well, everyone, that's pretty much all I have for this week's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, if you have any other questions you want answered or a topic you want covered, feel free to reach out. All the various ways to contact me are listed in the show notes section at the bottom of your podcast app. You can also find them on the Arc Junkies website, arcjunkies.com. If I choose your question, I'll send you out a free sticker pack and I'll give you a shout out on the show. Hope you all have a great rest of your week. Stay safe out there. And until next time, make every well better than your last.